iron in the soul. What's up, YouTube? This is Iron and Soul. Back today with another video. Please subscribe to my channel. Like this video, share this video, leave a comment, and let me know what you think about my content. In addition to that, please feel free to follow me over on Instagram at the King Jabez. It will be greatly appreciated. Let's talk about a very important subject matter today. And this is a video I get, think I've given the title, Jehu, the Confronter of Jezebel. This is a very important teaching. And what I've done, guys, I'm going to give you a little bit of explanation. I have about, let's just say I have a, a number of messages that were on my channel a couple of years ago. And I feel led to revise those messages, right? Use the same titles, but different content, fresh content. And so today is an example of this. This is an old title, but fresh content, fresh thoughts, because I believe it's so relevant for what's happening right now in the world. Now, make this clear. This isn't at all because I'm running out of content. In fact, right now, to be totally honest, I have three, four notebooks full of notes I want to talk about currently. Not even going to my flash drive where I have hundreds of notes and whatnot. Guys, I've been studying it for years. And so I'm, I'm sure you guys know by now i got plenty to talk about. Okay? And we're not even talking about current events. And so I have a lot of stuff, not even including the message on Daniel, where I have like 13, 14 more messages. We've only covered like two of those so far. So I have a lot of content. But... I feel led to really lay down some of these foundational teachings, if that makes sense, before I go forward. And so I have a number that I've been reflecting on that I think, you know, what need to be brought back um, for this time, for what's happening in the earth right now, February 2023. I think it's so relevant. And so I'm going to talk about today, Jehu, the confronter of Jezebel. To give you some background on Jehu. He was a commander in Ahab's army. So, you know, he had firsthand account of the evil, the turning away from the Most High, the rule of Jezebel and all of the pagan worship and the worship of Baal. And so Jehu was in a position for years where he had to observe this without really having the power yet to confront it. So I believe that statement gives us some wisdom as to how we confront the Jezebel spirit. You can't go directly after the spirit. And I'm going to give you some teachings to really explain that further in this talk today. So it's maybe about 15, 20 minutes or so. So I want to encourage you to listen to the whole message. Because we're going to see that there are layers to this satanic, demonic rule that was alive and well in ancient Israel with the ancient Hebrews. And we see this today. And I'm going to point that out very clearly in America and in other countries across the earth where you have this satanic rulership through Jezebel's, Ahab's, and Baal worship. So there's nothing really new under the sun. So that being said, Jehu had to kind of play possum for a while. And, and this is the wisdom he had. In other words, you got to play chess with this type of spirit. The, and this is not to glorify, but this demon and demons plural associated with this have such a spiritual power that it won't be confronted or taken down with one talk. So me giving these talks isn't enough. Praying one time won't be enough. Having one conversation. This is something you have to work through strategically for years. And you have to understand that some strongholds take years to break down. I want to remind you that the ancient Hebrew king David had to rule OK. Part of Israel for a number of years. David was the king over Judah for seven and a half years. And eventually he gained the rulership of the entire nation of Israel for the next 30 years. So he was basically king overall for 40 years. But there was still a seven year battle to get the entire nation. So why do I bring it up? You know, when you're dealing with demonic people, strongholds sexual sins, lust. You have to work through these strongholds and these demonic soul ties. Sin, you know, we're talking about Jezebel, Ahab, generational curses. We're talking about a lot when we, we discuss this subject. All of that has to be worked through through time. And that's exactly what happened with Jehu. So as a commander, he got first-hand experience. 
He was able to learn how to lead first. He was able to go to war and to battle. And he was the perfect person once the time was right to take down this alliance. Jehu is who we would call a regulator, a change agent. He was that the leader that confronted. And, and what we need is we need strong men who have the ability to confront sin, to confront bad people, right? That's that's a part of man. And manhood isn't just being a nice guy. There, there comes a time when as men, we have to confront evil properly. Because when you don't do it the right way, you can be dehumanized, right? That's what we talked about in our last message. So what am I saying, guys? We got to use wisdom out here. There's a lot of satanic, demonic energy out here, and we can't just grab the bull by the horn. We have to be wise in how we move. Because when we don't use wisdom, we become easy praise for those who want to dehumanize us anyway. Okay? So that's why I'm taking my time, guys, day by day talking to you guys and giving you these different layers because I don't want to misguide anybody. Right? Why am I taking my time? This has to be broken down, and you need teaching daily consistently so that over time you can make the right decisions i'm not the guy that just starts shooting answers at you and say go do this go do that and send you off that's not proper teaching proper teaching requires multiple lessons as i'm doing multiple videos okay this is also why i have a book i, I suggest you guys read that's like 70 pages of content right there becoming strong as iron i made it very accessible it's 4.99 i made it cheap for a reason so you guys can read it and get that information so don't think that the price is what it's worth. It's worth more than that, to be honest. Okay, I'm in my humble opinion, it's my own personal story in life, it's worth more than five bucks. But I made that accessible so you guys can read that, get that knowledge, get that content, and apply it to your lives, okay? One option. And then two, secondly, I offer consultations when I can sit down and talk to you one-on-one -on -one for 30 minutes to an hour. And so, why do I do all of this stuff? The books, the consultations, daily videos, because we are in a very real war. Okay. And, and there is a need right now in my mind. I, I see a clear as day. There's a need for men who have a spirit like Jehu, right? Men who will be strong enough warriors like Jehu to confront, to be regulators, to be those who, because the world's so bad, we can't change everything. So let me put that out there too. We, we're not here to just change the whole earth. It's too messed up. And it would always be that way until, until the Messiah returns. But what we can do is present some type of order in the midst of the chaos. I hope that gives you perspective. That's that's our role. We're not. I'm not here to change America. America is, is far as is, is over. It's gone. <laughs> okay, it's Babylon. You know the the glory of God is departed. All of that, <laughs> right? But what I can do is play my role for God. Right? Be that voice for God. Be that man for God. And that's what you can do too. You can be that pace setter. You can be that motivator. You can be that light in the midst of darkness. And I tell you, when you have that light, you will stand out. People will gravitate towards you. Some of you guys' experiences right now, people gravitate to you for energy, right? For encouragement, for perspective, for from your personal life experience. So you can be that. And this is what we can do if we want to have that warrior spirit that the world is so aggressively fighting, right? If you watch the news and you look at social media, it's obvious, guys, we're all intelligent. We're not dumb. They are aggressively removing that warrior spirit from the earth. They are essentially taking the teeth from the lions. His name means Yahweh is he. We know that Yahweh is the Hebrew name for God, which essentially means I am, which is a reference to the conversation he had with the prophet Moses. When he essentially stated, I am who I am at the burning bush. And so here is a man who was sent by Yahweh. He was sent by God, the most high, the divine creator, to confront this very dark, demonic, satanic strong code. So whenever you're going to do something like this, in order to, so when I say Jehu, the confronter of Jezebel, Jehu was, was you know, let's be clear here, was a strong man. A weak man could not do this. And it is because of a number of weak men, it's not any one person in particular, a number of weak men worldwide, that this Jezebel spirit has gained so much power in the earth. And we're not talking about just in America, we're not talking about just in the black community, white community, this is something that um, is all over the globe. So this is, we're talking about America, we're talking about the UK, Africa, we're talking about China, Russia, 
We're talking about black families, white families, Asian families, Mexican families. This is a spirit that is operating in a lot of families, a lot of businesses. Okay, so this is going to happen at work too, by the way, guys. You're going to run to Jezebel everywhere. So be prepared for this at work. Be prepared for this in, in, your, in your own family sometimes. Not necessarily, your, not your wife, better not be, at least. But in your family, or relatives or whatnot. Um, even in the church. Jezebel's love to hide in churches. Uh, so with my background, you know I know that much, <laughs> okay? They love to hide in the house of God and to cause, because one of the, the, the marks of Jezebel is she wants to be a religious leader. So one of the ways you can you can expose a Jezebel is she wants to be this this fake prophet, prophetess for God. And she wants to do all the prophesying. She wants to talk to you about God and be your spiritual leader, which is backwards. And so <laughs> that's, that's a problem that I've seen firsthand. So there will require a partnership with the king and the prophet to take down Jezebel and Ahab. That partnership and power and bell worship and false gods and sexual sins and false prophets and all that comes with that can only be broken down with the help of the prophet, the man of God, the prayer, the direction right from the Most High, the spiritual authority, that's necessary in the spirit realm. And then you have the king who has that, that juice, that power on the earth, uh, that position. Doesn't have to be necessarily the king of a nation, but you have a business, you're over a company, you have some type of power and resource on the earth. Follow me. So when you have the kings, the men in power, who have the positions and the resources. That makes you a king. You can't really consider yourself a king without power and resources. This is the way it works. You can't consider yourself a prophet if you're not really connected to God. And that's one of the problems we have even today. We have people using titles inaccurately. If you're going to call yourself a king, I'm not saying you got to be rich, but you have to have some level of power somewhere and some level of resources. And, and the same thing with a prophet. We're not saying you got to be Moses or Elijah, but there should be some level of spiritual authority on your life. There should be some level of power. I, I, I would think... You guys will think that about me. Otherwise, you shouldn't be following me. But I think I've proven with my work over the last three years. I think it's clear to you guys who are spiritual that the hand of God is upon me. Right. That there's a level of authority that comes behind what I say and not just earthly authority. We talk about spiritual authority that comes from the most high God. And so I do consider myself and I know I am by the grace of God, a prophet of God. And so as I give this message, the breaking down of the Jezebel and Ahab power structure requires the power and presence of the prophet as well as the resources and the connections of the kings. And this is exactly how Jehu took down Jezebel a long time ago. Let's talk about Ahab for a second. Ahab did more evil and incited the Most High than any king before him. So here was a guy that really mismanaged and was a poor steward of that king position. Maybe listen to this message, and this may be you. Okay, I don't know you guys, but I'm going to talk to you. Maybe you're you're falling into being an Ahab. And I'm going to talk about this briefly in this video, because I plan to really have a whole video talking about Ahab, because I want you to understand that and why you shouldn't be that. Because I'm going to say this, one of the problems we have right now in the earth is that there are a lot of Ahabs who are enabling and giving the authority to these Jezebels. Okay, listen to me. Listen. Jezebel really has no power without Ahab. Ahab was the king. And what Jezebel did was position herself right next to Ahab and took that power right from him. And this is what women like this do to men. They watch you. They observe you. Women watch you from head to toe. From your body language, your energy, your ability to make eye contact or lack thereof, your voice tone, the way you carry yourself. Women study men. Okay? They watch us. And when they see their weakness in you, they're going to take their power right from you. So that goes for you if you are, you understand, a, a, a boss at a job, whether you're a manager, supervisor, director, CEO, whatever you may be, principal at a school, you understand, uh, and leadership and law enforcement, wherever you may be in power, there is some woman there watching you to see if she can take that from you. And that's not an indictment against all women for those who want to take that away because that's what you want to hear. But that's an indictment against women who are operating under this spirit. Let me put that out there. Because some of you want to vilify and demonize me for saying the truth. 
Don't demonize me. Don't vilify me. Don't dehumanize me for speaking the truth. And so some of you guys, you are guilty because you finance Jezebels. Okay? You pay for their, their sites. Okay? You go to their, you know what accounts. And you pay for that stuff. You are enabling them. Okay? You are part of their satanic demonic rituals. I know you don't like to hear that, but that's the truth. You're part of the problem. These women don't have problem with power, um, rather, or can't create problems without the power you give them. Money is power. That's reality. You can talk all that fake spirit stuff all you want to. Money is power. So when you add some money behind that, you embolden it. You energize that satanic energy, sir. So if you are guilty of this, then, then make an assessment. Don't get mad at me for saying this. And some of you say, oh, are you talking to me? I'm not talking to no one person. I'm not talking to two people. I'm talking to whoever hears this message. Because I'm, I'm assuming this video will get viewed probably two, 3,000 times. It's my guess, if not more, hopefully more. You understand? And for the guys who hear this, if the shoe fits, wear it. So don't, don't be calling, calling me to my, oh, are you talking to me? I ain't, I'm talking to whoever. If, if you feel that way, now I am talking to you. If you ever hear a message from me, and you feel like, man, I was talking to me, then that, that, what does that tell you? This message is for you. So wh why do I say all that? There would have been no need for Jehu had Ahab did his job. But since Ahab did such a bad job, Jehu had to come in with the prophets and with other kings to clean the mess up. So when men don't do the right thing, then other men, strong men, have to come in and revamp stuff, shake it up, correct, regulate, position themselves to be the priest provides protectors of the earth. Let me also say this. Before Jehu confronted Jezebel, he went after Jezebel's people first. So there were a number of men that Jehu had to remove from the earth, to put it lightly, <laughs> okay, and had to lay hands on. You know what I mean? <laughs> and he took, he did that first. Right? So what, what does that say? Je, um, Jehu understood that the Jezebel spirit has her male buffers there first to shield her. Huh? Jezebels always have their beta males. I know you don't like that. I ain't scared of you. That will stand there as a buffer between them and and strong men. So how this works, guys, is that a Jezebel will always have some old goofy men right there to fight you. So you got to fight them first before you can even get to Jezebel. Okay? That's exactly what Jehu did. If you want a reference in 1 Kings 19, do your own research. I won't read it for you. I want you to read it for yourself. I'm not going to do everything for you. Do your own research. But in 1 Kings 19, we see very clearly that Jehu went out there her people first. So it gives us a twofold message. One, Jezebel has her male buffers there to come after you. And two, you have to deal with them first before you can get to Jezebel. So Jehu did that. What came next? He obviously had to go out to Jezebel. And that accounts very clear how she left the earth, what happened, how gruesome it was. Those details don't need to be, be revealed right now in a, in a um, YouTube video. But a very quick Google search, you can find out exactly how she died. And that's the end of that. So, that being said, it is also interesting to know that Jehu's obedience to the Most High, check this out, led to a generational blessing. And this is something that is not spoken on enough. Just as there is something called a generational curse, there is also something called a generational blessing. So, because Jehu did the right thing, the scripture is clear, his descendants were blessed for four generations after him. So four generations of men were blessed after Jehu because of his obedience. So what am I saying? I'm teaching something here. There is something called a generational blessing. And this is why it's so important for you guys to live a certain way. That's my goal. I want to live my life in such a way where I'm able to bless my son, his son, his son's sons, and his son's sons. You understand? So I want to live my life in such a way where my son is blessed, my grandson is blessed, my great-grandson is blessed, and my great-great-grandson is blessed. That's the type of legacy we can leave. So what am I saying? 
your 60, 70, 80 years on the earth, it should leave a legacy where you are blessing generations, decades of men after you. Think long term, brother. Because when you leave this earth, guess what? The show doesn't stop. Once we leave, those same demons will jump into other people. Not saying the demons are in me. Okay, let me be clear on that because that's what some of you heard. <laughs> the demons in those people. Let me put that up. Get that clear. Those Jezebel spirits that were in these, these people, them demons, and they have Jezebel, when those people die, they jump right into other people. So the transfer of spirit teaching is very biblical. That's clear. There's a lot of transferring demons in the music industry too, by the way. Let me put that out there. So when some of those artists die, those demons that were in those people hop into the next artist. So there's a transfer of demons happening right now. This is why they have certain artists around other artists. This is why they have some artists around future. <laughs> Let me put that out there real quick. And Drake. That speaks for itself. Okay? So, that being said, I hope you have received some insight some perspective, some strength, some hope. And I'm going to leave it right here. Because I don't feel the need to teach everything in one message. This is multi-layered, and I will revisit this and add layers to it as necessary to give you a thorough teaching, to give you food for thought, and to add upon this. This is today me laying a brick. And I want to lay bricks each day and continue to give you insight, wisdom, Hope, encouragement, and daily guidance. This is your brother, Iron and Soul. Thanks for listening. God bless. Peace.